Today we're mixing an indie pop track from scratch using Xbox Pro. Take a listen to the before and after. Obviously a massive transformation, and in this video you're gonna see every single step of how he did it. I'm gonna break it down and make it easy to follow along. I've got my mix session all prepped. I've got markers so I can easily jump around the session. Everything is color coded and organized in a way that makes sense, and I've already taken care of all the tuning and editing. So we're ready to just focus on the creative aspects of the mix. Let's take a look at all of what's in this session. We've got a massive stack of vocals. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe. We've got some great sounding drums. We've got a couple different types of bass, a bass guitar and a synth bass. Those basses kind of trade off in different sections of the song. We've got a bunch of different styles of guitar. And we've got synths and some strings. Now this is a remix of the original track, so we've got some of those tracks throughout this session, but especially here on the intro and interlude, we're gonna have these kind of callbacks to the original, and we're gonna do a pretty cool radio effect on these. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe. The first thing we need to do with this mix is focus on the faders. You can see when we hit play, we're clipping a lot on the stereo out, which is our master bus. Stay on my mind. And so seeing that clipping like that tells us we need to lower everything down. So I'm going to take everything except for the stereo out fader, and I'm just going to bring it down until we're not clipping. This is a really important first step. We want to make sure that with no plugins or anything, we're not clipping the mix bus. If we are, we got to pull all the faders down just to make sure that we have enough headroom. Ultimately, this is going to lead to a better sounding mix and it's going to allow us to get more clarity and punch. My next step is to add a limiter to the mix bus. I'm not really adding that much gain, but I do like to have it there as I'm mixing just to see what it feels like if I push into it a little bit. My next step is a very rough fader balance. I'm not worried about fine tuning. I just want to get everything generally in the right place. When I'm doing this initial fader balance, I'm kind of thinking about pulling faders down rather than pushing them up a lot. So if you just think pull down what's too loud rather than pushing up a bunch of elements, you'll be more likely to maintain that headroom. <laughs> So you can see this is just a very rough fader balance, but it gives me a good starting point to start working on individual elements. If you've been watching our other mix tutorials, we're gonna be taking a much different approach with the vocals in this session. Most of the time you have one lead vocal that kind of stands out in front, and then you have background vocals that support it. But in this particular session, we're gonna be taking an entire stack of vocals, and we're gonna be placing them all kind of in the same plane to create one unified vocal in order to get this unique doubled vocal sound. So before we do anything, take a listen to these tracks here. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe, you know. I'm going to start with just the lead and the lead double, and I'm going to put them opposite, one left, one right. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe, you know. I do like that. Let's add in these doubles and also split those out. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe. It's a very different feel than having one lead vocal front and center. We're more creating this spread out stack of vocals. Let's do something similar in the verse. Won't you ever run back, turn and pull the trigger? I could hold my breath, wait for you to figure. Sometimes when you're doing this technique, some takes will be a little stronger on some lines than others. So here you can see that this track, you can just look at the waveform, see it's a lot softer than this one on this particular line. The other ones match up pretty well. In this case, I'm just going to turn down the gain on this one section. I'll be so lost without your love. So that is something you do want to look out for as you're doing this style. You want to make sure everything is pretty even left and right. Let's take a look at these background vocals. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
So, so far we've only done panning and leveling and already it's sounding a lot bigger and a lot better. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe, you know. So now let's talk processing because it's also going to be a bit unique because we're doing this style. Instead of loading up Xbox Pro individually on each of these tracks, I'm going to actually group these together based on their parts. So we've got lead vocals here. This is kind of our hook lead. Then we've got our verse lead vocal and we've got our background vocals. So now I've got three different stacks of vocals. This would be the same thing as creating an aux track and routing the vocals into that aux track. In Logic, we can do it with a track stack, which is similar to a group. So let's just focus on this hook. And I'm just gonna start with Xbox Tone, doing a little bit of cleanup before we start processing it with the full Xbox Pro Strip. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe, you know. But I'm here pretty far, dreaming on a big star around you, does it show? You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe. You know, but I'm here pretty far, dreaming on a big star. So all we did was pull some of the lows out, add a high pass filter, and maybe boosting just a little bit of highs. And all of a sudden, everything has opened up a lot more. So now that we've done a bit of cleanup with Xbox Tone, I'm going to load Xbox Pro and start dialing in the strip. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe, you know. But I'm here pretty far, dreaming on a big star around you, does it show? So with the compression on this vocal, I don't want to smash it. I want to make sure that we maintain a lot of those dynamics because that's what helps this vocal style really work. If we were trying a different style of mix where we took that lead vocal and tried to push it as far forward as possible, we'd be using a lot more compression. But in this case, we kind of just want to glue this stack of vocals together and make sure it sits in the front of the mix, but not like it's taking over the rest of the mix. Think about you all the time again, babe, you know. But I'm here pretty far, dreaming on a big star. And that's one of the reasons I love this Opto Plus FET. I'll try a few different compressors out, but this one is just very natural and transparent sounding, which is great, especially in this instance. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe, you know. But I'm here pretty far, dreaming on a big star around you, does it show? In this case, Opto plus FET, it just sounds the most natural, so that's the one I'm going to go with. Now the de we may want to play around with the focus. I'm making sure that it's only hitting when there's an S or T sound, but I just want to make sure that we've got the right frequency selected. It's a little bit harsh on some of those S's and T's, and I think that's happening in some of the lower frequencies. So let's see if we can dial that in. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe, you know. You stay on my mind. You stay on so here when we have it set to 3.2, you can see we're getting a nice healthy de-essing on that S and it sounds very smooth. If we bump this up, it's not going to be quite as smooth. You stay, you stay on my mind, think you stay on my mind, you stay on we can also smooth out the compression a bit with the comp color. If we push this up, it's going to start reacting a little bit different. It's going to get a little darker and warmer, which might work well on this vocal. You stay on my mind. You stay on my mind. Think about you all the time again, babe. You stay on. So we get a really dark compression as we push that towards the top. But let's go ahead and just pull this back. We want it a little bit warmer, but not too much. You stay on my mind. Think about you all the time again, babe. You know. So now let's move on to the tone. I don't need to do too much carving or specific work there because we already did that with Xbox Tone. Now I'm just going to focus on enhancing what's there and using the shaper mode in order to bring up some of the lows and highs in a really pleasant way. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe, you know. But I'm here pretty far, dreaming on a big star around you, does it show? With the tone handles here, I'm just going to dial these in. And on the high one, I'm going to try some lower and higher and see what feels the most natural. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe. You know, 
but I'm here pretty far. In some styles, I may like pushing it up here. It's a lot sweeter sounding, it's a lot airier. But in this particular mix, I actually like it a little bit more round at the top. And by pushing this down, we're getting a much more present vocal. Let's see what that sounds like as we dial it in. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe. You know, but I'm here pretty far, dreaming on a big... So I really like this shaper mode for these high and low curves, especially in the lows where you can just pull it up and it doesn't ever really get muddy. It just kind of morphs the overall low end, makes it feel a little bit warmer. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe. So far with dynamics and tone. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe. It's doing exactly what we want. We just want a subtle lift. We want to elevate what's already there. We're not trying to morph it into something completely different. Let's move on to space. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe. You know, but I'm here pretty far, dreaming on a big star around you. Does it show? I really like this crystal space on this track. It doesn't sound too big. It's a nice controlled reverb, which is exactly what we want. If we had too big of a reverb, like you heard there with Infiniverb, for example, it just starts to sound muddy. We want it to be very clear, which this reverb does well. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe, you know. So now I'm gonna play around with the space tone slider. And for this, I'll turn up the delay and reverb a lot more just to hear what the effect is. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe, you know. But I'm here pretty far. The vocal is already pretty warm sounding, so it can use a little bit more life and air to it. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe. So now let's add a little bit more warmth here with the tape set. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe, you know. You can just hear how that glues it all together. It sounds really full and warm. Let's hear it in the mix. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe, you know. I'm here pretty far, dreaming on a big star around you. I love what that's doing to it. It's just elevating the vocal that's already there. So now I'm going to copy this processing over to the verse vocals and let's hear it there as well. So with the verse vocals, I want to change the space setting a bit. It feels a little too big right now. So I pulled back some of the delay and most importantly, I adjusted the time on the reverb to be a little bit shorter and it just makes the vocal feel a little bit closer, um, a little bit more in sync with the rest of the instruments that are happening there. Let's copy our main lead vocal stack back to our background vocals. So these background vocals are pretty dynamic. We want to be able to place them in a specific spot in the mix. We want to hear them very clearly, but we don't want them to be super forward. So to me, that generally means we need to compress them a little bit more so we can put them right where we want them. So I'm going to load up Xbox Comp individually on each track, and I'm going to use the smooth mode in order to give it a nice compression so we can put it where we want in the mix. So let's dial in the compression on one track, and then we'll copy it over to the rest. So you can hear it just feels a lot more solid with the compression. Let's go ahead and try that in the context of the mix. I definitely like that, but I do want to add a little bit of sparkle to these vocals to make sure that they have their own place. So I'm going to use the Air Plus slider. Probably take away some of the lows so they're not competing with the leads. So let's listen before and after any processing on our vocals. It 
At this point, I love how these vocals are sitting. I think we've got a great starting point with these chains. We can come back and fine tune things later, but let's move on to the rest of the mix. Let's start with the drums. So the bulk of our drums in the hook are coming from this drum loop. And it's really punchy drum loop, which is great. I want to actually tame it down a little bit. I'm going to pull up Xbox tone and maybe just roll off some of the highs slightly just to make sure it feels nice and round. It's a fine line. We don't want to make it sound dull, but it's nice to kind of take off some of the edge, especially on the clicks of the kick and the snare. It just sounds a little bit warmer this way. A lot of the rest of the drums are fitting together really nicely. They're really just the claps, the crashes, and the SFX here. Let's move on to this section and see how these drums do. So in this section, we have a big shift in how the drums feel. They get really bright all of a sudden and really forward. So let's see if we can blend those in a bit more. Probably gonna take down the hats. So I like these stadium drums kind of being the more dominant loop and then this E-kick snare loop just kind of supporting it. See this tom fill. At the end here, we have a shaker loop that gets introduced. I think we could add a little bit more sparkle to that. Let's pull up Xbox Tone. We might even be able to add a little bit more sparkle to these claps, help them stand out a bit. So you can see how adding air to just a couple of elements extends the range and makes the track feel a lot bigger. Let's just solo the drums before and after these three Xbox tone. And that happens just by taking the claps and the shaker loop, adding a little bit of excitement there with Air Plus, and then actually dulling out the highs a little bit on the main loop. Just creates a little bit more separation, makes the drums feel more open. Let's take a listen to this bass guitar. It's a nice sounding bass. I do think we could add a little bit more power to the lows. I'm gonna use the shaper mode here and just pull up the lows a bit. Now it feels a lot more like a bass. Let's hear that in the track. I definitely like that direction. I think we could just tuck it back now a little bit. Let's hear this re-space, see how that transition feels. Definitely works well. It's okay for this section, I think, to have a little bit more of a sub foundation. When the hook comes in, the kick drum actually kind of takes over some of those sub frequencies, so it still feels balanced. So with a mix like this, where we've got a lot of different elements, we wanna really focus on where we're placing them in the stereo field. And that's all about panning. A lot of these tracks are already in stereo, meaning they were either double tracked or recorded with some type of stereo pair. So let's see how we can pan these to create a bigger image. <laughs> Thank you. 
it's important whenever you're doing panning to make sure things still feel balanced. You don't want to tilt your mix one way or the other. Right now, everything still feels like it's pretty well balanced left and right, but we just have a lot more width. Let's add in our other synth elements here and see if we can balance those as well in the stereo image. So you can see I'm going back and changing some of the guitars now that the synth has entered in because now it actually did feel like it was leaning a little bit to the right. So we're just kind of balancing it as we go. Love how that's coming together. Let's hear it with the track. I want to try to clear out a little bit of space on some of these tracks, but instead of doing it at the group level, I want to just focus on the ones that might be problematic. So for example, this acoustic guitar. It's got a lot of energy kind of in those low mids, so I'm just going to pull that out, probably flip over to the clear mode. It's a very subtle difference, but you can definitely hear how it cleans up some of those muddy sounds. And when we put it in the mix, it's going to sound a lot cleaner. With this guitar, I'm also going to do a similar thing, but probably not as extreme. with this indie synth track, I'm gonna actually pump up the air a little bit. Again, just kind of extending one or two elements that we wanna kind of pop through, and we're just gonna add a little bit of air plus. I'm gonna go back to the rhythm guitar and see if a little air plus there might work as well. So listening just to the track and what our mix moves have done. It just kind of takes the blanket off the speaker a little bit. It's a lot clearer. We feel like we can hear through the mix. Each element has a little bit more space. I do want to tuck back on these claps the air just a little bit, just to make sure it's not too extreme. Let's dive into this intro and interlude part. I'm gonna group them together and that way I can process the entire group as one. I'm actually gonna load Xbox Pro on the entire stack. This is all of these instruments here. First thing I wanna do is a little bit of telephone effect. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe. Oh. I'm also gonna put the filters at the very end of the chain and play around with those to tighten it up even more. I'll probably play around with a bit of compression as well to kind of smash it. And I might add just a short room reverb to it as well. But I'm going to take off space post. So now the space is not post SFX. It's going to be also processed by this telephone effect. So it's just kind of a nice distant sounding, almost like it's on a speakerphone. Oh. 
I think these SFX could come out a bit more and add a little bit more excitement. Sometimes if you're feeling like the mix is flat, check whatever high frequency elements you have going on and make sure they're loud enough. Uh, in this case, I think the SFX could add a lot more excitement. Just makes those transitions feel a lot better. So at this point, I'm really happy with how the mix has come together overall. I'm gonna take a quick ear break and come back to it with fresh ears and start comparing it to commercial reference mixes. This will let me come back, hear it with a fresh perspective and make any final adjustments before it's ready to print. So I just came back from a quick break and I started comparing to some commercial reference mixes. And I started noticing that this mix feels a bit smaller in general. When I say it sounds smaller, it just seems like all the elements aren't quite as big. They're not taking up as much space in the room when I compare it to other mixes. So we're gonna address that and the way I generally like to do it at this stage is through bus processing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group everything in the track together. So essentially what that's doing is just sending all the instruments to a bus. I'm going to call it the instrumental bus. And what I'm gonna do here is load up an EQ and just start to play around with the shape, especially in the lows and low mids, to see if I can bring back some body. You definitely wanna be careful when you're doing this type of EQ, especially on broad strokes, like the entire instrument bus. But in this case, listen to what happens when we turn this on. You're gonna notice how before all the instruments feel a little bit further away and they just feel like they're a little thinner sounding. They don't have as much energy. When we turn this on, all of a sudden it gets a lot fuller. So in this case, this is working very well. I might add a couple bands that are a bit narrower just to pull out any areas where it gets a little bit too muddy. I'm gonna do a similar type of processing with the vocal. I'm gonna call this my all vocal bus. And here I'm gonna load up Xbox Pro. So just a couple of tweaks. We're adding some smooth compression, which is adding a lot more body. We're also adjusting some of the tone here to increase some of the clarity in the mids. And all of a sudden the vocal feels like it's taking up a lot more space. I'm gonna bounce back to the instrumental bus and just add a compressor here. I wanna just glue this together a little bit more. So where you really hear this, especially when we're just doing a little bit of compression like that, you hear it on the transients and the sustains. So the transients are gonna feel a little bit more tucked in. Those are the things like the attack of the kick drum or the attack of the bass guitar. And then you're gonna also hear kind of the rest of the instruments be brought up just a little bit more. So it feels overall a bit glued together. <laughs> So now let's listen before and after just the bus processing we just did. So just that has really elevated the overall mix. But now I wanna look at the mix bus itself and see if we can continue adding some body to this mix. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of compression on the overall. And for this, I'm gonna use a VCA. It's a very fast, clean compressor.
definitely like what that's doing. It's just very subtly gluing it together a bit. I now want to look at a little bit of EQ after that. You stay on my mind, think about you all the time again, babe. So in a mix like this where you want to keep it sounding natural, you don't want to make it sound too bright or too airy, I like to take a bell curve like this and place it somewhere in this maybe 14 to 16K range. Just kind of dial it in so that it's just adding a little hint of sparkle there. You want to be careful not to overdo it, but just a little bit can add a nice amount of sparkle. Similarly in the subs, I want to make sure that we're getting enough power from the subs, so I'm going to play around with another bell curve down here. I'm liking how that sounds. I am going to pump a bit of gain in with the limiter. So let's listen to just our bus processing and what we've done so far. So I'm really liking how that just made everything feel like it's taking up so much more space. It feels a lot fuller. There's a couple other things that are sticking out. One is the kick drum. I want to make sure that kick drum in the main hook has enough sub information. So I'm going to pull up an EQ and I'm going to dial this in directly wherever that frequency is of the sub. So you can see the peak of this kick drum is somewhere right around here, maybe in the 40 to 50 range. I'm just going to put a bell there. It's important to be really careful whenever you start doing anything in the sub range like this. Generally, I don't like to touch it, but in this case, I do feel like the kick is lacking a little bit and I want to bring out just a little bit more power in the subs. Now that I'm liking where this is sitting tonally, I want to look at a couple different sections. The bridge here, we could do something pretty cool with these vocals. I'm almost hearing different delays, almost as a delay throw. So in order to do this, I'm going to create a new aux track. I'm going to call it vocal delay throw. And I'm going to load up Xbox space. Now I'll set the input of this track to a bus. That way I can send it through this bus here. Now with Xbox space, I'm going to pull down the dry all the way so that we're only going to get the delayed signal. Ooh, ooh, I'll be so, I'll be so, and I'll play around with different modes. They each have different timbres to the delay. Ooh, ooh, I, ooh, ooh, I, so I think a half note delay feels right. It kind of puts the delay in those spaces. So I like where that's sitting, but I want to make sure that we only send the first two of these lines. So I'm going to automate this send to only really send on those words. Ooh, ooh, I'll be so lost without your love. So lost without your love. Now that I've got that, I can copy it over here. Now I'm going to add another Xbox space, and this time I'm going to keep the dry up and just add some reverb. So now we're going to be adding reverb to this delay. Ooh, ooh, I'll be so lost without your love. Ooh, 
your love. So it kind of just places it one step back. Let's hear it in the mix. So I like where that's sitting, but I do think it would be a little cooler to have it ping pong back and forth. So lost without your love. And finally, after that, I'm going to add a compressor just to really smash this delay throw. I do also want to tweak the space on the lead vocals here, make it a little bigger. I'm also going to balance the vocals a little better with the track. By pulling down this all vox bus, we're able to balance it very easily. So let's listen before and after any of our processing on this track. So just this little bit of processing makes a massive difference in opening up the mix, making it feel so much bigger. And you can see we really didn't do a lot. If we hadn't used Xbox Pro, we probably would have had to use six or eight different plugins in order to do all of this. But you can see there's not a lot of plugins on this session and we're able to get a massive warm and full sound, which is right for this mix. Thanks for joining us with this mix. Leave a comment below with what you'd like to see us mix next. So lost me